a good day to you all. Stay with us today because we are going to speak about a subject which many people have been affected by. So you need to know this, how to get out of this situation, by faith, of course. A very good day. May God bless you all. Actually, I'm not going to say God bless. I want God more to do more than bless you. I want Him to make you a blessing. Because if you are the blessing, you will not be seeking blessings. You will be a blessing to bless other people. So instead of receiving, you will give. This is a great secret of faith. When we are in the faith of the Holy Spirit, so then we want to give. We want to give. We always want to offer that which God has given us. So this is the greatest blessing. The more we give, the more we want to give. And the more we give, the more we receive as well. And because we give, we receive. And then this situation of giving and receiving, you become capable of not just receiving because it's not forceful, but it's a gratitude which does not come from men, but comes from God. So the subject which we will deal with today, now, is with regards to anxiety. Anxiety. Anxiety is an evil of the century. Actually, it's always been the evil of all centuries, but at the moment, it's the worst. It's one of the worst. It's a pandemic. A pandemic which works in a subtle manner, in a subtle way, silently, but it devastates the life of a person slowly but surely. It's as if the person would be going to hell slowly. Each step he takes, he is en route to hell. And the worst is that it makes one to even be sick when you go to the doctor. I have been through this experience. He immediately asks, you're probably anxious because it's so common, so common, which people have been suffering with. Because when a person starts speaking, the doctor will say, you're anxious. But I told him, no, I'm not anxious. I'm not an anxious person because I trust in God. So this doctor was trying to sound like a prophet, isn't it? It's actually because it's so common. When they find someone who does not have, they become amazed because it's something so common nowadays. So see what Jesus said with regards to depression. Just look, anxiety, not depression, please. Let us read. Jesus said, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. How updated is this word? What you will eat or what you will drink Oh, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? For example, in this pandemic, which everyone is suffering with because of this quarantine, we see that this is perfectly applied. Because when one is on lockdown, stuck in his own house, he cannot. He cannot, not just, I, I mean it in this way. He cannot get up and say, today I'm going to do this, I'm going to buy clothes, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to do this and that. No, the person is on lockdown. 
the anxiety is also on lockdown is on quarantine the person becomes so lacks options to do that anxiety grows even more because of the day of tomorrow many people cannot even sleep nowadays in these days of so much anxiety so much worry how will it be what about my job what about my work so which means it makes a person to be depressed look what the dictionary means it shows it says that anxiety disorders it can it's physical it's an agony an affliction anguish a, an intense desire impatience or unease about something with an uncertain outcome strong desire to concern to do something or for something to happen so this emotional condition which happens inside of a person the worst of all is that the person becomes lost completely lost completely disorient disorientated an anxious person is that person who has his mind fixed on an objective and as long as he does not fulfill his objective his dream or conquer that which he wants of which he's put on his mind he does nothing else he has no vision to do any other thing which he needs to do and this is the problem and in the case of the single ones who become anxious to get married this as well takes away the peace the night of sleep of a person the faith it's really a lack of faith because faith is the opposite it brings unto you tranquility peace assurance so all the young ladies and young men who become they fall into the situation they get lost they only think about that problem there he does not live his day according to how he should live because that anxiety is way too strong Jesus also says that enough is each day has its own problems each day has its own problems which means one cannot be worried about tomorrow to be anxious about tomorrow or after tomorrow when a person lives in faith and then my friends I will say to you I will share with you an advice actually this is why many people and perhaps it's your situation why many people have their lives stuck stuck you never take a step forward nonetheless you seem to be sinking slowly into a quicksand or mud you're stuck in the mud why because you are so anxious so focused on the fulfillment of that desire that you forget the other things which are more important and it's why Jesus is saying here do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body what you will put on or any other thing with regards to your life anxiety my friends is something extremely evil I could say it's a cancer in the soul why because the person does not think does not have his eyes 
focused on the actual day. He does not look at the current day now. He's only focused on that objective. That dream, for example, as you said, many young people, they want to get married, they want to marry, they only worried about getting married. So, when an opportunity appears, immediately, the first one appears, he jumps in and there, there comes hell. Because an attitude, a premature attitude was taken. But what I'd like to say, I'd like to add what you need to be conscious of. When we speak about faith, when the Bible speaks about faith, the Bible does not speak the Holy Authors, the Holy Spirit Himself using His servants. He speaks about faith as a mode of living, a mode of living not dealing with any sort of religion because many people unfortunately when we talk about faith or when they talk about faith they immediately say oh but each one has his own religion which means they associate they always associate faith with religion and here is the great mistake and the great danger here is the great danger because religion does not solve anyone's problem regardless of the religion it does not solve anyone's problem it never solved it will never solve religion is satanic because it leads people to a behavior a religious behavior which does not bring any benefits of faith but Bishop, I'm not understanding your language. Let me explain to you. I was religious. I was Catholic. And then I was a spiritist. And I believed in what I was taught. But I did not even know the existence of the Bible. I did not even know. I had not even heard about the Bible. So, when... I got to know the Bible and I began to be informed of its greatness. Inside of me was born a faith with intelligence, a faith which leans not upon religion, religion A, B or C, but the religion of faith, which is the religion of God which is what is written in the Bible. So, when a person a person wants faith, he will seek for it in the Bible, the Word of God. Paul speaks there, the Holy Spirit speaks through Paul, that faith comes by listening, hearing of the Word of God. When a person hears the Word of God, he receives the faith of God. When a person hears the religious, he receives the religious faith. And the religious faith does not solve any problem as it did not solve my problem, my personal problem. It did not solve. It did not solve. I recall that I was a Catholic, apostolic, a Roman, and I was faithful to my Catholic religion. But when I had a running stomach, a serious problem in my family. I remember it was actually on the Holy Friday. And I went to the church and I saw there the body of the Lord dead, lit candles and flowers and many people surrounding that body and crying and crying and crying. And at that moment, at that moment, I was desperate, I was afflicted. I thought with myself, of course, it was the Holy Spirit, Esther. I thought to myself, hold on. Who? Who's suffering more? I or he who is dead on this table? Which means he was dead. He was dead. 
He could do nothing for me. What good was it for me to be there praying or crying for him? And the people were crying there for him. I said, no, I don't accept this. If God is living, there needs to be life. There needs to be an answer. And I'm not finding an answer here for my problem. So I left there to never return. And I went to Spiritism. And the Spiritism, it was different. I did not see any image. I saw the spirits speaking. And there was the pass. The past. Do you know what is the past, Esther? I heard about it. So the past is like this. They do this here. Get out of there. Pass to that side. Which means the evil that's on you pass to another place or another person. So I would hear this word. And I thought that my problem would also come to pass. But it did not pass. Nonetheless, it, it grew. It increased. I said it can't be. But when I heard the word of God, there was no pass of here or there or this thing of mass. No, no such thing. I got to know in the word of God, the living God, the God who is spirit. God is spirit and truth. God is not religion. God is not an image. God is not a sensation. God is not an emotion. God is spirit. He is spirit, which means he is life. Life, eternal life. When I heard the word of God, I fell in love with his author, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, of which the Holy Spirit gives to us because his word illuminates your eyes open so you are no longer deceived because you have the word of a living God who is attentive to your prayers, to your cry out. This is the Word of God. The Word of God says, My Word will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I want, what I desire. It's the Word of God. These words are of Jesus. This Word here was not whoever who wrote it, but it was the Lord Jesus Himself who spoke. Jesus said, he spoke to me, said to you, said to us, I take this word for my life. Look, do not worry. Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or nor about your body, what you'll put on, etc. Because life is not life more than food, it's more. Life is the spirit, the same word which he said, let there be light. And there was light. It's the word. Life is more important than the body, than clothes, more important than food, more important than drink. It's more important than everything. Life. What is life? It is the spirit which God gave to us. Look, my friends. Do not confuse the intelligent faith. This is why we call the biblical faith an intelligent faith. Because we lean upon the word of God. It's not upon the word of men. We have several problems. We are responsible for a great number of people. Thousands, thousands, millions of people. So... How can I have a mind to solve problems, to have, to take actions, to decide? How can I do this if I'm human, if I am made of clay, clay, but the Word of God gives me direction every day of what I need to do and what I should not do. But what I need to do permanently, I did yesterday, I do today, I'll do for the rest of my life, is to maintain my faith clean, pure, 
a faith of which the conscience is clean. So this faith of a clean conscience, so which has nothing to do with religion, this faith leads me to know what I need to do and what I should not do. Jesus says this, do not worry because anxiety neutralizes faith. He who lives in anxiety is because he does not have the Spirit of God. This is the reality. This is why we say to people they should receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If he does not receive the Holy Spirit, Esther, he will not be free from anxiety. And this person with faith is excluded from fear, from worries, from anxiety because this faith covers you are founded upon this word of life it's not just any word the true knowledge which comes from above which comes from God it's not the phrase of a scientist or a philosopher but a word which brings life so you base you found your faith upon this word because you're no longer alone no need to be afraid I remember Esther you for example, when you were young, you were a youth. You were already baptized with the Holy Spirit. You had the desire to get married. But were you anxious thinking just about getting married? Look, for a while, anxiety would come. But I would fight back. I would say, my life is in the hands of God. My faith is in God. I want to do your will, not mine. So I would transfer that anxiety unto the hands of God and I would be in tranquility. Which means it's even normal for a person to want to fulfill his dream. I also had the desire to share the gospel to others, that which I had. I wanted to share it to others. I had this huge, this immense, this extraordinary desire. And I could not wait to be free to go to preach the gospel. However, however, I would not, we could say, get lost because I wanted to do exactly that because I believed, I believed and I believed that it was the will of God for my life to take to people that which He had given me. So obviously, I tripped, I did a lot of foolish things because we are young and we had no instructions. Today there's so many instructions. We have television programs, we have programs on the internet, Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. So we are always guiding people who want help. But I did not have these guidances. And it was difficult for you to wait for this moment. So this wait caused to many people anxiety. But if they wait from God to put in the hands of God, then the problem is not a heavy weight, a burden, but rather a privilege to be in the will of God. Let me share a secret. Perhaps it changes your life now. There will be a before and an after. It might be a watershed moment in your life about the secret for you to see yourself free from your anxiety. Because it's of no use to be talking about anxiety is like this, like that. We need to talk and teach how you'll get out of anxiety. Just look. I had an anxiety. And in this anxiety, in the moment of great affliction, I 
inside of me, I said, Lord, my life is with you. My life is only useful if it's to serve you. It's only useful if it's to do your will. I don't want to live my life for myself. I want to live my life for you, to serve you. So then, let your will be done in my life. Let your will be done. That's it. You know, it was my, the experience I had. At that moment, God heard. He saw my sincerity, my honesty. At that moment, I had the sensation that God had held me in His arms. I felt, we could say, in spirit, that presence of God. How glorious was it? It's as if it took place yesterday. Glorious. So you, my friend, who are sincere, you, my friend, who desires to leave this anxiety, the anxiety for this, the anxiety for that, what am I going to do? How will I do? Put it all in the hands of God. Speak to the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I know that your spirit scrutinizes. I know that your spirit knows of the depth of my soul. And you know I am anxious for this, for that, etc. But at this moment, I want to surrender it in your, in your hands. Let your will be done in my life. Let your will be done. But it's like this, Esther. I ask you, what is to surrender this prayer? I come to you and I say, Esther, hold this here for me. And then you hold it. Hold it high like this. You're holding it. If I'm not trusting, then are you holding it well? Esther, are you holding it well? Don't let it fall. Look, be careful. Be careful because the other hand could let it fall if I do this. I am showing distrust. I'm not trusting you. And it's exactly what God wants from us. He wants trust. When you get a plane and you say, oh God, direct, guide the pilot, the captain, and make your angels to keep this aircraft. Keep it. Whenever a person enters and flies in it, so you give, you surrender, you dedicate your life to an intelligent faith. A faith with intelligence. A wise faith because you are doing exactly what Jesus told you to. And King David says this. Surrender your ways to the Lord and trust in Him and everything else He shall do. So, my friend, see that the intelligent faith has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with intelligence, with reasoning, with knowledge. Use your faith with intelligence, my friends. Because if you don't use it with intelligence, you can be sure. You will struggle unnecessarily, although being part of the universal church of the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter whether you're an official of the church or a member, an assistant, it doesn't matter. If you don't use your faith with knowledge, with intelligence, biblical intelligence, you are going to struggle. You are going to get stuck and no one will be able to do anything for you. You're not even God. Because God only rescues those who call upon Him. Those who cry out. Those who surrender. Those who trust. This is the faith. Just as you, as we, as us. We go to the doctor We say, Doctor, I need this. I'm suffering with this and that and whatever else. We trust in that doctor. And the doctor, we, we trust in the knowledge of that doctor. And before that which he knows, he prepares the, the recipe. 
So he says, take this and that and that. So then you trust in him, you take it accordingly, the medicines according to the time he tells you, etc., etc., because you trust in the doctor. The likewise, is trusting the word of God. Oh, my Lord. Take my life. Let your will be done. For life, for death, I want to do your will. Trust is the key to open a wide door for you to fulfill your dreams, to not be anxious. So anxiety, Jesus told us to not worry specifically for us to keep a living trust permanently within us, within the powerful hands of God. God wants to do this in your life. He wants your trust, my friends.